Exercise 1, SOLIDWORKS 2018. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at the model before you and how to construct that, as well as some of the other tools and things that are in this version. So let's begin. Uh, first of all, as we look at this model, you can see that there's a number of basic features on it. We're going to learn how to shell. We're going to learn how to put chamfers on, fillets, and extruded cuts, and boss extrusions. So let's begin. Start by going up to New and select Part and hit OK. Now on the left here we have our Feature Manager Design Tree and in it is basically will eventually contain our roadmap of everything we do in a chronological history of how we did it, which enables us to go back and make changes to it pretty easily. What we're going to see um, also at the top here, this is our ribbon, and this has a variety of different tools, some of which you may or may not have on your SOLIDWORKS license. Uh, some of them are add-ins or extras, which you might not have. I'll try and tell you that when I run into it. But um, essentially, let me, I'm going to disable, you, here you could disable SOLIDWORKS add-ins, like you'll see PhotoView 360. If you have that, go ahead and and enable it. Uh, I'm going to disable my SOLIDWORKS simulation here. But um, I'm going to go ahead and then also up here, this is really nice. If you go up to this little arrow up here, you'll see there's the pull-down menus that appear. And I know it's kind of old school, but I do like them because sometimes it's easier to tell you to go on, on there than it is to try and describe an icon. So you'll see sometimes I'll use that as well. And there's not icons that are up all the time for every single option as well. You do have the ability to customize the interface with a simple right click up here. And you could go to customize. And you'll see that um, on commands, these are all the different icons. There's hundreds and hundreds of them. So if you were to have those all up on the screen, it would be uh, confusing. So you want to optimize it with the things you use the most. All right, so let's begin. Um, we're going to go ahead and select the front plane. Now these are your paper, essentially, front, top, and right planes, which all intersect at a centralized origin, which is your zero marker in space. The origin also acts as an anchor, and we'll see that uh, in action in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and select the front plane. When you click on it, if you don't move your mouse quickly, uh, you'll get this quick launch toolbar, which is very nice to have. Uh, up if you could access it. But if you move away, you might want to take, you're going to have to take the scenic route then. You just go up here to sketch, the little sketch tab, and find sketch. Now, if you hit the little arrow underneath sketch, you'll see there's sketch, 3D sketch, 3D sketch on plane. Uh, we're going to primarily use for the first uh, several lessons only the, the, the regular sketch, which is a two dimensional sketch. This 3D sketch is very nice for tubing as well as uh, different th types of things like that. We're not going to use it in this particular exercise, though. So just go with sketch. And you'll see that the plane automatically goes normal to your screen. We're looking at it straight on. This plane, these little handles, uh, it's just a visual aid there so you can actually get your bearing and what you're looking at. So if you're in an isometric view, it's going to look a little skewed. But we're, we're normal too, so we're in good shape. And by the way, your mouse buttons, the middle mouse button is for selecting items. Uh, the left, I'm sorry, the left mouse button is for selecting items. The uh, right mouse button, we're going to use every once in a while for special options. It's going to give us pull-down menus typically for other options. And the scroll wheel is to zoom in and out, but don't use that just yet. We don't want to scroll in or out just yet. I want to go through that in more detail. And also it's for rotate. But anyhow, now as we take a look up here, we see our variety of sketch tools. Uh, we want to actually go with the corner rectangle, but notice there's the line tool in it. Uh, if you hit the little arrow to the right of line tool, you'll see line, center line, so on and so forth. Uh, we, we don't want that, so just click off of it into the main screen. If, you know, if you click on the viewport right here, this is the viewport we're looking at, it will actually, your uh, rectangle will disappear. That was actually your plane. Don't worry, the plane is still there. It's invisible. It's just that uh, we're sketching on it. One way you could tell you're sketching is that you'll see the origin right here. It's in red. And then also down at the bottom, you'll see we're editing sketch one, it says here. 
But let's go up here to corner of rectangle. If you hit the little arrow to the right of corner rectangle, you'll see there's lots of options, parallelograms, three-point center, things like that. We're just looking for the very first one. We're going to explore those others later on. But let's go with corner rectangle. Now move your pointer onto the screen. You'll see it turns into a little pencil, and it shows a preview of the rectangle. That's to let you know what, you're, what tool you're currently in. Let's move up to the origin. And when you get this little orange dot that appears, it's an indicator you're locking into something. It's actually called um, a relationship. And it will lock in to that anchor point, which is your origin. So go ahead and click and drag this out into the upper right. And you'll see little X and Y numbers to the right of your pointer. And that's just to get you pretty close to the marker. It's for conceptualization. Maybe you have an idea about what the scale is. So you could draw it to that. We don't really need to get it quite to scale here because we're going to force in dimensions, which that's typically what you want to do when you're going for production. So let's go ahead and just um, click to release that. All right. And now you could actually hit the escape key on your keyboard and that will turn off your rectangle tool. But you're still in a sketch. Um, also, if you have this uh, shaded image inside here, it's just letting you know that's a water bo watertight boundary condition. And for an extrusion or 3D models that you're going to make, you always want, or most of the time, you want a watertight boundary condition. So. Now that we have that, you'll see these little squares. And those are more of those relationships that it forms. There's two types of constraints inside SOLIDWORKS. There's dimensions, which we're going to see in a second, and there's relations. And relations is another layer, you might say. These little ones, like that indication, it's vertical. That line cannot skew left or right at an angle in any such way. It will always stay vertical, and hence this is horizontal, horizontal, vertical, and that's coincident. So we're going to explore that in a little bit more uh, detail in the future. But right now, let's go to the Smart Dimension tool and look at the second or most common way of constraints here. So move your pointer after you select it. Now, you could do point to point. That's an extra click. I mean, if you want to be a little bit more efficient, you could just click on the line. But don't click on the points. And you'll see there's actually a midpoint. Stay away from the midpoint in this case. We don't want a dimension to that. But go ahead. Once the line turns orange, Click one time and release the mouse button. When I say click, I'm always referring to the left mouse button. I will be sure to tell you uh, with two times, I'll say right mouse button, right mouse button, if I want you to use the right mouse button, click. But in this case, uh, when I just refer to click, I'm just saying by default your left mouse button, unless you flip-flop your mouse buttons if you're left-handed. But anyhow, um, now move your pointer over to the left. And those of you who aren't familiar with dimensioning, uh, it, if this is your first exploration into uh, mechanical design. Note um, these extension lines are on here. And you really kind of want to make it kind of like a field goal. Get, it, get your dimension in the center of it and away from the bottom. OK, so like this. It's going to just make it look nice. And it, there's actually dimensioning standards, but we're not going to go into that right now. Okay, anyhow, so once we uh, click, you'll see that it brings up our modified dimension box, and it has the dimensions here. Now, if you're going to use the little keypad on the right of your keyboard, if you have an extended keyboard, make sure your number lock is turned on. Otherwise, uh, you could go ahead and just type in using the top numbers or whatever. Um, in this case, we want this to be 5. It's going to be 5 inches. And by the way, we're working in inches, and I, I will show you how to change that back and forth. Um, if you, those of you are in foreign countries or you're using metric even in the States here, um, you could actually type in the equivalent uh, in inches or metric. So if you are in metric, you could type in 5 and type in IN as in Nancy, so inches, or the little quotes for it, and it will convert it automatically in the metric equivalent for you. It's kind of nice here. So like if I wanted that right now, I'd type in 5 IN for inches like that. And it would apply it. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the green check. All right, and now it's five inches. Let's go ahead and click on the bottom line now. Now notice the colors here. Like the left line is black, the top line's black now. Bottom, you can't tell because I selected it. So it's a, it's a glowing blue. And on the right, it's just a, a darker blue. 
those colors indicate the status of your sketch geometry. When it's black, it's fully defined. That's good. You actually want, before you go into production, you want everything fully defined. That means that it has the constraints, the dimensional constraints, as well as the vertical, horizontal, whatever, to lock it down so when it goes into production, everything is completed. If you get yellow or there's other colors that come up, that might be an indicator you've overdefined your sketch. You might have dimensioned it twice or things like that. So um, we'll go into that in de more detail in the future too. But anyway, again, uh, between the center goalposts here, go ahead and click and type in three. You don't have to type 3.000 or anything like that. If it's just three inches, just type three. It knows to put the rest in there. Now you'll see mine is only in two decimal places. At any point when these dimensions are selected over here on the left, you can actually adjust it uh, and put in the precision. So if I wanted it to be three decimal places, I could click on that and change that. But also if you wanted to flip-flop between metric and English, down here in the lower right, you'll see either MMGS or IPS. Hit the little arrow to the right of it, and there you have millimeters, gram, second, or there's centimeters, gram, second, meter, gram, kilogram, second, or inch, pound, second. Since we're in the States here, basically uh, we're in inch, pound, second, but uh, we do a lot of metric as well. All right, there's another button here. It's Edit Document Units. That actually takes you to an area up here, the little gear, if you click on it, which is your options menu. So you could use the gear or you could go and click on that and use change it there. But you'll see system options and this is where you could change anything uh, essentially like the screen background color. Now be careful of that though because um, if you do that your lines remember are, are black when they're fully defined. If you change it to a black background you have to change the lines too and so on and so forth. So you could tinker with that later under colors here or whatever you want. There's all types of fun things to go through. But uh, right now, we're going to look at more of the document properties. By the way, system options, the tab up there, these are global settings. Whatever you change in here changes forever uh, on this license of SolidWorks that you're currently working on unless someone strips it out or hits reset at the bottom here. Okay. Otherwise, click on document properties, and this is specific to this particular document. So you'll see on mine I have it set to ANSI, the American National Standard. If you hit the little arrow to the right, you'll see ISO, DAN, GHOST. So if you're in Russia or if you're ISO or you know whatever, you can change it. But we're working in this class in the ANSI standard, so ANSI. And remember, once we set this up, it will remember it for the specific document. There is a way to save it as a template, but I don't want to do that and cover that just yet. I'll probably cover that in a later uh, edition, probably in the detailing, which is, on, is exercise six. So you could fast forward to that, and that talks about detailing, and then I show you how to make templates there. I don't want you to make templates just yet. Uh, the, Anyhow, okay, so from there on, you'll see all these other options you have. Like, for example, go to units, and you have the system of units you can change it to. So here you can change it here as well. It's always in the lower right as well. So either one is fine. And then here again, uh, you have the ability to change it like, hey, I want to see three decimal places versus two, or uh, even higher decimal precision. You could go up there, up to eight decimal places. Also, you can set it to dual dimensions as well. So um, let's go ahead. And actually, I'm going to turn on my dual dimensions here uh, and hit OK. All right. Uh, actually, I didn't turn that. I have to go to. Never mind. I'm not going to turn them on. Uh, anyhow, so now that we have some of those dimensions tailored, you'll also see when a dimension is selected, like if I click on it one time, over here on the left, you have the ability to. Uh, put in a tolerance. So if you wanted a bilateral tolerance, you could put in the plus or minus settings and things like that. Um, I'm going to hit none. So just wanted to show that to you. You could also click on these and you could put in notes over here. Never delete the DIM. That's the dimension. So go, get out of the little brackets and then you type in whatever you like there. And then there's a small library of commonly used uh, symbols and such. Okay. Anyhow, now that we have that, Let's go to the Features tab up here on the upper left. The Features tab is really your three-dimensional tools tab. The Sketch tab is your two-dimensional tools tab because you're sketching now. It's usually 2D. Um, but anyhow, in this case, we go to Features. 
Now we want to create a solid from this rectangle that we have. Go to Extruded Boss Base. Click on it. And now over here on the left, you'll see some options. You also see in the center here, it's gone to an isometric view. You can actually grab that little handle with your mouse button and drag it forward and you'll get a ruler. So you can actually get pretty close. Like there, I managed to get it to one. It's not always the easiest to snap to those things. We actually want this to be a half inch. So you could try and get that. I oh, managed to get it. But over here, oh, I didn't. Take a look over here on the left. Um, we could click in there, click over it. Oh, you don't have to backspace on it or anything like that. Just drag over it so it's blue. And now type in 0.5. You don't have to type in 0 0.55, whatever. Just 0.5. And go ahead. You'll notice over here we have blind, up to vertex, mid-plane, things like that. We're going to use those in just a little bit. But let's stick with blind. Blind is just the specific depth. So hit the green check mark. And now you have your solid. Now, if you click somewhere on the screen, everything will clear up. You might have had some little highlights because of the extrusion. But anyhow, now what you can do here, let's take a look at some of the options. On your keyboard, find the arrow keys. Hit left, right, up, and down. It rotates in 15 degree increments. Okay. If you hold the control key, it pans with the arrow keys. If you hold the Alt key, the right and left arrow key rotate clockwise and counterclockwise. If you hold the Shift key, it rotates in 90 degree increments. Okay. Also, if you hit the F key on your keyboard, it's zoomed to fit. So that just the F key. Now there's another neat option here. Hit your spacebar. The spacebar brings up what looks kind of like an ice cube. Okay. Now this enables you to select these specific faces and look, if I click on this little polygon right here, it'll give me isometric. Hit it again and you'll see that there's the view orientation box in the upper left corner. You could drag this down a little bit farther and then you'll see that there's the specific views that you could choose from, front, top, right. And also the fast keys are on there too. Look at that, front is control one. Okay. Um, and so on and so forth. So let's uh, go ahead and click on the front view orientation. Now remember, we didn't start sketching yet, so we have to select surface to sketch in just a moment. But on a side note here, notice there's view orientation up here as well. If you click on that, it's the same thing as hitting your space bar pretty much. All those same options. Now this is one of my favorites, Normal 2. Uh, you could select any surface on the model and then click on that Normal 2 button and it goes normal to that surface. It's a really nice tool. We're going to use a lot in the future. Anyhow, uh, just click in the screen somewhere again. You also have the ability here to go to take, uh, shaded and takes off the hard edges. Uh, you have hidden lines removed. Okay, and let's, with that, like that, let's show you how to rotate now. Move your pointer in the center of the screen and now your mouse wheel if you scroll it in or out, it's zoom in and zoom out. But if you push it down as though it's a button, yes, you can do that. Hold it down. Now move your mouse while you're holding that middle mouse button down, left and right, up and down. That's how you dynamically rotate inside SOLIDWORKS. Okay, you can release it now. Um, anyway, let's go back to display style and let's just... Um, Let's see here. Uh, we're going to go right here to Shaded with Edges. Now also you have this little television. You have real view graphics, shadows and shaded mode, ambient inclusion, perspective, cartoon, so on and so forth. Um, we're going to take a look at those a little later. But basically, um, perspective, just so you know, is great for photo rendering or when you're trying to get a view, but tr don't. it's very difficult to work in. So just be aware when you're adding dimensions, they in your modifying dimensions, I should say, they appear not in their proper position sometimes. So just be careful of that. Um, if you turn these shadows on and things like that, it can get a little dark, so you might not want all those on, but feel free to tinker with that. Also up here, the apply scene, you'll see you have a number of options like plain white, uh, which brightens the screen a little bit. And you could, again, select some of your favorite options out of that. And there's a list you can manage too. Okay, now, we're going to go ahead and
make sure go ahead and hit your space bar again and make sure right here you'll see there's isometric okay be careful don't get this one confused this one is really nice up here this black that turns the ice cube on or off which is really nice to have let's remember you could click on a face on that ice cube and then it goes normal too so it's kind of a neat feature as well there's other rotation features with the right button and things like that i'm, I'm not going to go into that though too much detail right now okay so now that we have that we're going to go ahead and last time we selected the front plane and we started to sketch i don't want to do it i want to show you a different method now the planes are great but once you have surfaces you could actually sketch on the surfaces so if you could click on the surface right here provided it's flat okay just remember that it has to be plain or flat okay now select that face you'll see that you have a couple options now what's interesting here you have the ability to edit a feature that would edit that five inch by three inch block that we made earlier we don't want to do that just yet but remember that because that's going to come up if you ever want to change something you could do that this will uh, edit the sketch. It actually changes the dimensions. I'm sorry. Uh, edit sketch changes the dimensions of 5 by 3 that you saw there. This one, the edit feature, would actually change this blue dimension, which is the feature dimension for the extrusion. And you'd be able to change it. it bring up the, the information on the left here. So you have those options. But anyway, just click on this one right here, sketch. Now, if you'd like to go normal too, you could hit the space bar again. And remember, this, I told you this is one of my favorites, normal 2, or control 8 is the fast key. And that will bring you normal 2. Now, you're probably saying, well, we could have just clicked on the front. Yes, you could have, but you're not always going to be working on the front plane, so I'd like you to become familiar with that particular option. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go back to the rectangle tool, corner rectangle. Go ahead and click on it. And glide up to this origin again. When you get the orange dot, go ahead and click. And now we're going to see something interesting. Now bring it up so X is like maybe one and a half, or uh, I'm sorry, about two inches or so high. Uh, and then go ahead and move to this edge. Sorry, the X should be about three. You'll see it will snap on that edge. Notice that we're getting a little square to the right of the pointer, that little yellow square with the dot in it. That's making a coincident relationship. Forever it will be tied to that edge. Uh, we could go back and delete it just by clicking on the blocks that we saw earlier, those green blocks, but we want that. Now notice this too, and I don't want you to do this. Uh, you can move up to it, but don't click on it. You could easily find the midpoint too, which is very useful on symmetric parts. So just be aware that's another nice feature. Let's move down again. Go ahead and select right on this edge about where it's uh, Y is about one and a half inches or so. Click and now hit escape on your keyboard. Again, we have those little blocks. Remember, if you didn't want this to be on this edge, because look, if I try and drag this away, I can only drag it up and down. It's locked into that point. If I were to click on this little relationship icon right here and hit delete the DEL key on my keyboard, now watch this, I could drag it away. And I could reattach it just by dragging it back. And the way I'm dragging it, by the way, is just my mouse button. I'm just clicking on it and holding it and dragging it. So it's great for conceptual design. All right, now let's go over here to Smart Dimension, the upper left again, and just click on this line, drag it to the right, get it between the goal posts, and click one and a half inches. Okay, now let's try going to View Orientation and go to the isometric up here. Again, space bar, you could do that too, or the control keys. And we're going to extrude that again. So go to Features and Extruded Boss Base. Now when you extrude Boss Base, there's an automatic merge results. We want that on in this case. But beware if you wanted them to be like stacked Legos where they're not really welded together, you could turn off merge results. Thus you have two separate volumes. We don't want that. We actually, in this case, we want it to be one solid volume. So leave merge results on, and basically it gets welded to the other part. It's below it. Uh, we're going to notice it all it kept the defaults, 0.5. That's fine. Go ahead and hit the green check. Okay, click somewhere on the screen just to eliminate whatever is up there. You could also hit escape after you're done with that. Okay, now we're going to... Uh, cut a hole in here. We want to drill a hole right over here in the upper left quadrant of this face. Go ahead and select this face 
And again, let's use the Quick Launch Sketch tool. Now remember, if you like the scenic view, go up here to Sketch and click on Sketch. Same thing. That's just extra steps, whereas the Quick Launch is really nice. Get used to it. You'll really like it. Okay, now let's hit the space bar. And again, we could go Normal 2, which if you like the fast key, Control 8 does that too. Okay, now click on the circle. Now, by the way, we don't always have to go normal tube. You could sketch an isometric view. It just takes a little getting used to. And this is our first class, so I'm not going to have you do that just yet. But go ahead and go to circle up here. Now, if you hit the little arrow to the right of circle, there's not many. There's just perimeter, circle, and circle. That's it. Okay, so just keep it on circle. Move your pointer onto the screen, and this upper left quadrant, go ahead and click and drag out a circle to where the radius is around 0.5-ish. Click. Now go to Smart Dimension and click on the circle and just drag it down here or up here. Click. We're going to make that 0.75. Hit Enter. Now we want to position this so we it could be manufactured so we know exactly how far it is off the edge. Uh, we could select the center point or the circle. It automatically dimensions the center point, if that's the case. But we could click on the center point to the left edge. And you might want to zoom up. I'm scrolling a little bit with my mouse. I'm scrolling it forward. Thus, it's bringing me out. Okay, now get it between the goalposts right up here in the open space. Click. Type in 1. And let's go over here again. Now, be careful. Sometimes you could accidentally select that little blue square, and you don't want that. That's the end of the extension line. Uh, you want the actual blue cross in there. Click on that. That's the center point. It's sometimes easier just to click on the circle. And also, when you click on the circle, you get other options, which are nice, too. But just get that center point selected somehow. And then select this top edge. Drag it to the left. Get it between the goalposts. Click, and that will be one as well. All right, we have it positioned. We know that because notice the circle turned black. It's fully defined. And if we take a look at the lower left, you'll actually see a little text, fully defined. So that's what you want before going to production. You don't, SOLIDWORKS doesn't force you to fully define it, by the way. It's just that um, that's if you're going to go into production, that's the, what you typically want to do. OK, now let's uh, go to Features. And let's click up here and go to isometric again, just so you can kind of see what's going on. All right. Now, most CAD systems have an extrude that allows you to go in as a cut or out as an extrusion boss. So adding material or removing are in one icon. SOLIDWORKS is a little different. It separates them. So make sure you click on the extruded cut tool to remove material. All right, now you'll see here, it defaulted to our 0.5. It remembered from last time everything was 0.5. So that's the depth. And you're probably thinking, hey, that's, this, that's the depth of our plate that we just made. We could leave that and it'll go through. Yes, it will. But now is a great opportunity to talk about something called design intent. Design intent is your plan on how you want your model to behave if changes come down. And in engineering and design, changes always occur. You're always going to change a thickness or a diameter or whatever. And if you know this is going to be a plate that's going to have a bolt through it, so it's a through hole, you always want it to go through so you don't have to go and change the hole thick depth after you've changed the plate thickness. So design intent is something that is just get you thinking. And I don't usually tell my students to think too much about this just yet because we don't have a whole lot of great examples of it. Uh, this one is a good example, actually. But instead of blind, you actually would maybe want to go with through all. That would ensure, no matter what we change that plate thickness to, that the hole is always going to be through. So go ahead and click on through all and hit the green check. Okay, now just to show you how to edit this, I talked a little bit about editing parts. Double click on this surface here and you'll see dimensions appear. Whatever surface you click on, whatever dimensions are relative to it will appear. So like if I click on the circle, the surfaces now, notice I'm clicking on surfaces, not the edges. Edges don't always do it. 
surfaces are what's important. Like this is an edge. If you double click on an edge, you don't get a whole lot there. Double click on a surface, you get a lot more. So uh, if you double click on the surface, you'll see there's the thickness. Let's prove that out that since we went through all with the design intent, let's say a change comes down. We have to reinforce this plate to 0.75 thick. Type in 0.75. Now, you could hit the green check mark to apply it, but it doesn't instantly apply it. Uh, you could hit the X, which would cancel the operation and go back to the 0.5, or you could hit this little stop light. Uh, this will regenerate with the changes on the screen, and if you don't like what you see, you could go back and change it. So we just hit it, and you'll see it made it a little bit thicker there. Now, you can hit the green check mark to apply it, and you'll see, sure enough, it's 0.75 thick. If you rotate this, you'll see the hole does go through. Had we gone with a blind distance of 0.5, it wouldn't go through. We'd have to go, and we'd have to double-click on the hole now and change that, too, for the depth. We don't have to do that now. Okay. Also, if you ever do make a change, let's go ahead and double-click on that surface again. Change it back to 0.5. We could have hit the undo button, by the way. Undo is up at the top here, and I'll show that. It's right up here. But let's type in 0.5. Hit the green check mark. Now, it says it's 0.5, but that doesn't look like it changed. That's because we hit the green check mark instead of the little stoplight. So find the matching stoplight up here, which is Rebuild or Control B, and it will update the changes that you requested. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sculpt this, make it look a little bit more defined. We're going to look at some sculpture tools here. The fillet tool, which basically puts a radius on whatever edge you select. Go ahead and select fillet. Now on the left, you'll see there's a whole array of fillets to choose from. We just want the basic constant size fillet. Um, go with manual. The fillet expert's an interesting tool. I'm not going to get into that right now. But anyhow, so items to fillet. Now, those of you who come from the 2D detailing world, uh, you've you got to think 3D now. Like, think of yourself as actually in the shop when you're working with SolidWorks. Like, you're going to take a file and you want to put a radius on a block. So you wouldn't attack it selecting these two edges. That's two-dimensional thinking. You want to think three-dimensionally and select the edge that you would actually touch and contact with the file that you're going to use or sandpaper. So this edge... Go ahead and click on it. Now you'll see it doesn't really give you a, a highlight of what's really happening there, but there is a nice tool over on the left. It's called Full Preview. Go ahead and select it, and now you'll see a little preview of the fillet taking place. You'll also see this radius number here. You could double click in there and type in one, hit enter, and you'll see it update. Now on the left, you see the same one inch dimension parameter. You can put in the explicit value here too. So this is just kind of like a example of a quick launch type of option. So if you don't want to have to move your mouse too far, you could just double click right there and change it. Okay, let's hit another edge. How about this edge right here? Don't go crazy and click on everything, just the two edges. Now, click on this one. I don't want you to keep it on but go ahead and select it. Now, let's say you didn't want that one. Go ahead and select it again, and it will deselect it. Okay. You could also deselect from the blue box in here. You could just click on what you don't want, hit delete on your keyboard, or right-click and hit delete or clear selection to clear all of them out. Don't do that. Okay. Now that we have those two edges, go ahead and hit the green check. And now let's go up underneath fillet. There's a little arrow to the right of that. And now you have chamfer. Actually, it's always been there. It's just hiding. Go ahead and click on chamfer. Now, chamfer is an angle, not a radius. So there's a difference between the two. All right. Now, items to chamfer. Turn on full preview, just like we had earlier. And type in 0.125, and we'll keep it at 45 degrees. But notice this up here. You have angle to distance, distance to distance. You have corner, vertex. There's a lot of options. We're just going to go right now angle to distance, which is 45 degrees for the angle, 0.125 for the edge. Go ahead and select this edge. And notice it will carry around the radius. And that is because there's... Um, 
the chamfer uh, actually tangent propagation is turned on by default. If you don't want that to occur, you could turn off tangent propagation and you'll see it just chamfers that one edge. But we actually want it to follow the tangent edges. Notice when it gets a sharp edge, it doesn't propagate around because that's not tangent, of course. Go ahead and select this edge right here too. Now be careful about selecting faces. You can do it, but if you click on it, if you do this by accident, everything disappears. When everything disappears, there's one of two reasons. Either you didn't turn on full preview, or it's failing to actually make the feature. And yes, that happens with 3D modeling. It's not perfect. Uh, there's actually orders of operations on how to add fillets and chamfers. Uh, tip, you know, there's best practices, which you're going to see in all the videos that I have. I'm going to try and go and cover most of them. But anyhow, um, right now, just go ahead and get those two edges. And don't select a face in this case. But there are uses for a face. Go ahead and hit the green check mark in the upper left. Notice there also, just so you know, there's a green check mark up here in the upper right. Same thing. You could also hit enter on your keyboard and apply it too. So those are just some options for entering. Okay, now we want to rotate this around and shell it out. So here's where you get to experiment a little bit. Hold the middle mouse button down with your pointer in the middle of the screen. And as you hold it, move your mouse right to the right. And notice you could go in little circles and spin it. And it will spin up and down so um, little ellipses and circles uh, the motions on your mouse will actually do that while you're holding the pointer so you can do a lot of really neat things with that now I'd like you to rotate it and take a moment to rotate it so it looks just like mine where you're looking at the back and the bottom two faces uh, if you want pause the screen spend a couple minutes this is a very important part of your learning because this is just like a child learns how to look at things and hold things in their hand and articulate you're learning the same thing here so if you want take a moment otherwise if you're ready we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next feature here I want you to find the shell command we're gonna make this a thin walled plastic part so click on shell and over here on the left you'll see 0.1 inches go ahead and click on this surface here and then we that's a face we want removed now there is a preview it's not the greatest if you click on it it's okay you can see the preview it's going to shell that out now if you fail to select any faces it will shell out the entire inside but it won't look like you did anything because there's no open faces so just be aware if that happens to you uh, use the undo button to take you back if you hit apply too early say undo or control z but don't hit undo control z too many times there is a redo button if you hit the little arrow to the right of that but just be aware uh don't don't go don't, don't select, over select it okay now since we have this blue box that means we could keep selecting now by the way if we pre-selected before we selected the feature you could do that too you just have to hold control but in this case we don't have to because we're post selecting we're selecting while the feature is active and you'll see those faces we selected one two three now that's all you want to select if you accidentally select a face you didn't want you could click on it again to deselect it okay so go ahead and hit the green check and you should end up with this a thin walled part all right so now let's take a look at first of all materials over here on the left, you'll see materials and not specified. Right click, and you'll see a list of very basic materials to choose from. Nickel, copper, brass, things like that. But if you go to edit material, there's a whole library of materials to select from. It defaults to steels here. If you hit the little arrow to the left of steels, it will bring it up, and you'll see there's iron, aluminum, titanium, zinc, plastics. And you can customize materials too. You can make your own and enter your own values in here. And these materials do carry over to the finite element analysis when you're trying to do studies of uh, failure and things like that. But anyhow, uh, you can select anything you like on here. I'm actually gonna go with a plastic and I'm gonna go with, a, eh, I won't go with acrylic. Let's just go with, uh, let's go with Delrin. Now the neat thing about the Delrin here, you'll see you have the ability to set up your megapascals so you could look at the yield strength and tinsel strength 
and things like that. And I'm going to move this out of the way just so you can see this. I'm going to hit apply and close. And now that's in there. Now at any time, you could go to evaluate. And let's say you're going to make a million of these parts and you want to find out how much your material costs are going to be or how many pounds of this material you're going to need. You could click on evaluate. And there's a scale here, mass properties. Click on that. And this will bring up your mass properties. And there you go, your mass and your volume. And you can multiply that by a million and figure out exactly how much material you need and what your costs are going to be. Okay, so let's go back to the Features tab. Let's change some colors here. So to change some colors, like for example, you could change the whole part color. It's kind of what we did when we selected a material here. Um, but you could also select individual faces. Like for example, select the chamfered face. One click. Uh, ignore the dimensions, but go over here to the beach ball with the pencil and hit the little arrow to the right of that. And this is your appearance editor. So you could edit the individual face. That's what's blue right now. We could just change that. We could change the entire chamfer feature. That would be both chamfers that we put in on the top and bottom sections of the plate. You could change the entire body, the entire part, so on and so forth. Or remove all appearances or individual appearances. But let's just change the chamfer. Click on chamfer. Now, on the left here, you have the ability to select a different color. I'm going to go with uh, the violet here. And notice it updates just those faces. You do have more appearances. Hit the little arrow to the, over here on the right of appearances. You'll find plastics, metals, paints. So this even gives you more options when you click on, like for example, aluminum. Um, actually, I don't have... Uh, Oh, well, there we go. It's just taking a minute to load. But there we go. I clicked on Chrome. There's Chrome Plate. Um, there's Satin Finish Brushed Chrome. You can have a lot of fun tinkering with this. If you have a proper graphics card, you could actually see the enhancements. Um, if you have a professional graphics card, i.e. an NVIDIA Quadro Series card. Uh, not the NVS, but the Quadro FX, or uh, those basically the higher-end cards, uh, as well as the... Uh, AMD has the professional version of the uh, Radeon Pro cards, Pro, Radeon Professional cards, or the Fire Pro series. Those will have those enhancements, and you'll be able to see them. And that's where you could turn on real view graphics and actually see what they're going to look like with those materials. Like, um, for example, if I went here to brass. You could see I have this enhancement. If you click on brass and you have a gaming card, let's say, like a, a GeForce or something like that, you are going to get more of a satin finish, which is, if I turn off real view, this is what yours is going to look like. But to have a professional card, it's a very nice thing. Even the inexpensive professional cards that are under 100 bucks will do this. So again, Quadro FXs, uh, the K-Series, those all work great. Uh, they have the M series now, and uh, I think they have a P series too. But anyhow, uh, those as well as the ATI, ATI Radeon Pro graphics, uh, those are excellent as well. So might be a nice investment if you do this for a living. Definitely if you are doing this at a company, request that you get one of those because um, it really does make a difference. There's uh, very nice. I'm going to go with nickel here. Okay, so anyhow, we've uh, completed that part. Let's go to the Render Tools. Now, you might not have the Render Tools tab. The way to bring it up is click on SOLIDWORKS Add-ons and turn on Photo View 360. Photo View 360 is an option. It doesn't necessarily come with every license of SOLIDWORKS, so be aware you, your company may not have invested in it. Uh, you can always contact SOLIDWORKS and get it. It's an additional cost but uh, well worth it if you're doing marketing materials and things like that. It's an absolutely wonderful tool. So once you turn on PhotoView 360, you could go to the Render Tools, and you could do an integrated preview. And now here, um, I always do turn on Perspective View because it gives you a vanishing point, and it makes it look more realistic. Just like if you look at a photograph uh, and you're in a square box room, you'll see that it gets smaller as it gets further away from you. And that's what happens here. It adds that automatically for you, giving it a more realistic appearance. And here, the longer you wait, the more um, 
the higher the quality will be on your image, whatever you selected. So you can see here, the longer I wait, the more realistic it's going to get. And, um, but don't forget to turn it off when you're done because it will run on the background, at least um, I think it might, it used to, I think. So turn off integrated preview when you're done with it. The minute you rotate, remember, it changes back to the original colors because uh, that's using OpenGL instead of the uh, typical integrated preview. Okay, so make sure that integrated preview is turned off. All right, now as far as uh, the um, training materials go here, let's go to www.vertanu1.com. Okay, and that's V E R T A N is a Nancy U X one dot com. And hit enter. That will take you to the website here, and you'll see there's some photorealistic rendering, speaking of which I, I've done in the past. Uh, you could go in here, you could go to instructional manuals, and here you'll find the SOLIDWORKS Basics Training Guide. And this is the 2017 version. I do need to make an update to it, so um, I just got 2018 now. Uh, anyhow, in here I also have links. These are the 2016, like I said, this is the old manual. I'll, Soon, I hope they have a new manual put up here once I get all the videos done. Then I could recreate this manual with the uh, 2018 links. But uh, you'll see I have hyperlinks in there. These are the point structures. Those of you who are in my classes, these are the point structures for all the exercises and labs to do. And then um, just an introduction, what I talked about today. All right. And what you need to do with each one of these is after you're done with the exercise at the very end you'll see like in this case this is finished now try lab one note patterns arrays and mirroring will be covered in the next three chapters please try to model the lab one without using them okay it's good practice so here's lab one it looks like the letter f and it's a two by three and a half and it has these like little blocks here and then it's just extruded a half inch thick good one to use the line tool. So let's take a look at that. All right, before we leave this one, let's save it. You just, uh, you could click on the disk and save it anywhere you like. Just give it a name. It's gonna be an SLD PRT and you'll be able to find it easily next time because uh, it does keep track of these. You could actually go to file and you'll see open recent. So you'll be able to see whatever files are there. Let's go now to file after you save that, let's go to File New. Now we can leave this one open on, in the back, it's fine. Go to File New. You'll see we have Part Assemblies and Drawings. Now um, we saw this earlier. We're just working with parts. The first four exercises are just part files. By the fifth exercise, we start hitting Assemblies. Okay, That's multiple parts in, in an assembly file. And then we hit Drawings, the sixth exercise, so 2D detailing. But let's click on part and hit OK. All right, select your front plane. And again, you could click on the quick launch right here. Or you could take the scenic route, go to sketch and sketch up here. Either one's fine. This time, use your line tool. Move your pointer to the origin. When you get the orange dot, click, drag this up. Now, by the way, um, these labs are really meant for you to do these on your own. So I recommend pausing this before you go any further and try and make it on your own. Uh, you, you will be a far better designer if you try that. Uh, and then if you get stuck, you could go ahead and watch this. Okay. So anyhow, this is going to be about two and a half inches in height. So I click vertically go across about an inch or so, click, drag this down. You could drag it to the midpoint, that's fine. Click around there, drag this about another inch or so, click, drag this up. Remember, I, I'm laying my F down on its side. So here, I'm gonna click here, drag this across another inch, drag this down. This one, you could go a little bit lower and then drag it across another inch or so, click. Now here, look at, I'm inferring to the origin. I'm gonna click there and then close it by going all the way to the end here. You used to be able to hit the C button. I'm not sure if it does it now. I should have tested it, I suppose. Anyhow, um, now that we have that, let's go to Smart Dimension up here. Click on this line here and 
let's take a look at that manual and that is supposed to be two inches so click on it hit two now click on this bottom line here again get it between the goal posts and let's take a look at that one that one is going to be three and a half 3.5 and then click on this one here at the top now those of you who are working in metric remember um, you could go in the lower right corner where it says IPS or MMGS and change it to IPS you'll have to go back and change some of the dimensions though unfortunately because if you've already put these in but that's not a big deal okay uh, this one oh, I forgot what it was This one is going to be one inch, and the next one's 1.75 and 2.5. So this is going to be one inch. Oops. And then click on this line. Now notice this. We're going to uh, create a baseline dimension here. This is our baseline. Select that line there to this line right here. Click and drag it up, and that's 1.75. And then again, using it as a baseline. Now you could hit F on your keyboard for F to fit. And then that centers it for you too. And anytime you rotate and it disappears off the screen, here's a little tidbit of advice. Hit the F key. It'll come right back. Okay, now go ahead and click on this line to this line. And this was, uh, get the center of the goalpost, two and a half inches. This one we don't have to dimension. If we, here's where you can make a mistake. If you add this, because notice the bottom already has it, but let's say you weren't paying attention and you added this. This is where you get the yellow I was t talking about. It's overdefined. So do you want to make this dimension driven or in control? Keep it in control so it can be changed. Or do you want to leave this dimension driving? If you make it, uh, actually, I'm sorry, driven means it's uh, it's in control by the other dimension. It's in control. It's being controlled by the other dimension. My apologies there. Uh, leave the dimension driving means that you have two drivers. Now imagine a car with two people with steering wheels. It's very confusing. That's what's happening here. You can't can't have two drivers. So one has to be disabled. So leaving it by the default here makes it a grayish color. And then you could click on it, hit delete, uh, actually hit escape first to get out of the dimension tool. Click on it, uh, click on the actual extension line and then hit delete. But basically, its value can't be changed. That's a reference dimension. And sometimes you want reference dimensions. Actually, for equations, um, in my one of my exercises in the advanced class, we actually make a, a dimension like that just for an equation purpose. Okay, now let's go ahead and add a few more. Let's go back to smart dimension. Make sure that's turned on. Click on this line to this line right here. And that's going to be 1. And then click on this line to this line here. Or we could have clicked on that line there, I suppose. Uh, I think it's 0.85, but let's verify that on the print. Yep, 0.85. Okay, um, one thing you'll notice, there's one blue line up here, and I talked about that before. That's an underdefined line, so if we click on that and drag it, it's still not fully constrained. So what you could do here, you could add another 2-inch dimension to lock it in, but this is where constraints are very useful because you wouldn't want that on a print necessarily. You might have a little dashed line to indicate that these are linked. Here's a way to link those two to two inches. Watch this, Hold, uh, hit escape a couple times, then hold control on your keyboard down and select both the blue line and the black line there. Take a look on the left, you'll see add relation. This is how you could force a relationship. In this case, we want them to be collinear. Click on it and hit the green check. And now you see the little dashed line to indicate that they are collinear together. Okay, it's fully defined. Let's go to Features and Extruded Boss Base. And we'll make it one inch. So just type in one in there and hit enter. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's supposed to be 0 0.5. 0 0.5, hit enter, and green check mark. And now just click on Save. Save this as L1 for Lab 1. The last, uh, each exercise, as we go through them, you'll see E1, E2, E3 in series. Uh, my students, I expect them, that's how they save it for their portfolio. And then all their labs get checked as well. So those are named Lab 1, Lab 2, Lab 3. Sometimes there's Lab 1, 1B, 1C, things like that. So keep a tab on what you're looking at. So let's take a look. There is another lab in here. 
for you to practice on. <clears throat> and here we have Lab 1B. Now this one is very similar to our part that we designed earlier. It has four holes, so you would like to really use the mirror tool here, but we haven't learned the mirror tool. Mirror tool, we learn in exercise two. So like I said earlier, try doing it without it. But I'll tell you what, I'll show you a little trick. Little heads up on what we're gonna see. So we can see it's a three by five inch block. It has four holes in it. It's one and a half inches thick, and then it has a slot milled through the center, uh, one inch deep. So let's explore doing that. So now let's go to new, part, and hit okay. Let's select the front plane again. Now you might think about like why which plane do I sketch on front top or right what do I why do I have to do this think of it like this way if you've ever seen a stapler a common stapler that you staple your paper paper together um, if you were to look at the front of the stapler the front of the stapler in most cases is just very rectangular and basic but if you look at the side the right side or left side of it it's very elongated it has the opening you have a lot more details so and if, then if you look at the top view, it's very basic. Again, it's just a simple rectangle. So your best bet, you grab the one that has the mo most features typically, not all the time, but uh, typically, and you would probably take the right side view of the stapler because you could draw it a lot quicker with all the features on it versus the front, which would just give you a very basic view. So you would then select the right plane to start your sketch, and that's all. But it really doesn't matter what plane you sketch on as far as I'm concerned. Um, where you work might be a different story, but let's get started. Okay, front plane, start a sketch, Take hit the little arrow to the right of your rectangle tool. We're going to use a new tool here, center rectangle. When it comes to symmetric parts like this one, it's a perfect opportunity. Click on center rectangle. You start off with locating the center, which is going to be anchored at our origin. So when you get the orange dot, click, drag this out, and the X and Y, eh, six by three-ish, whatever. It's supposed to be five by three, that's okay. Now we'll go to Smart Dimension, click on this line here, get it in the center of the goalpost, that's gonna be three. Click on this line here, get in the center of the goalpost, five. Now, I haven't showed you how to turn these off. I showed you how to delete them, but don't delete them, you want those. Um, here's how to hide them, because they do get a little annoying from time to time. Go to View, go to Hide Show, and you'll find Sketch Relations right here at the bottom. Click on it. There. And it's, your system should remember that from here on out. But if you ever want to turn them on, you can. It's just that they get a little, a little clustered sometimes. So I don't usually have them on. All right, now that we have that, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw in a circle in the upper left corner. Now be careful when you click and draw, don't let it snap to the center line. Bad, that's gonna lock it in. When you lock it in, you can't dimension it the way you want, so stay away from that. Click down here, and now let's go to Smart Dimension. Dimension the diameter at a half inch, so 0.5. Dimension the center point to the left edge, just like we did earlier. Click up here between the, the goal posts, 0.75, and then the center point to the top edge 0.75 as well. So now we've located it. All right, here is where I'm going to show you something that we cover in the next exercise. So it's a little heads up. Normally I tell my students, now draw all the other three of those circles in each corner, 0.75 by 0.75 half inch diameter, one, two, three times. I'm going to show you the shortcut, which is mirror. Go up here to the line tool, but to the right of it, click on the arrow instead. Find center line. Click on center line. Now move your pointer up here to the midpoint, click, drag it to the origin, click, drag it to the midpoint on this line, click, hit escape. Now we could use those as virtual mirrors. Just like if you were looking a, a mirror, you get an opposite copy on the other side. So watch this. Click, hit escape, click one time on the circle, release it. Now hold control and select the vertical center line. You can only do one center line at a time, by the way, to mirror across. So can't do them both, sadly, as far as I know. 
So uh, hold control select that. Now go right up here to the sketch tools and find mirror entities. It should mirror it over to the other side. Let's try that again. Click on this circle here and that circle, or better yet, hit escape a couple times. Move your pointer strategically almost exactly where my pointer is after you hit escape. See where my pointer is. I'll wait a second for you to catch up. Okay. Once you got it right in that upper corner, you're going to click and hold the mouse button down. Oops. Oh, mine's not doing it. Okay. Can't do it. All right. Hold. Uh, what I wanted to do is this. I wanted to select this geometry. So let's try that again. Get out of the actual boundary of the box. It's not liking that because the shaded mode. Get up here. Click. And you'll see you're going to drag from left to right and envelop just those two circles. Now be careful, don't envelop the top line completely. Whatever's completely enveloped gets selected. So look at this, look at what I have in the envelope. Release. Now you could have held control and selected those two circles. Okay, that would have worked too. But now hold control and select this horizontal line. And then you can release control after you get those selected. Don't worry about the dimensions. Ignore them. Now go to Mirror Entities, and then you're done. Okay, so this, those are all in position. If you change one, they update. Watch this, if I change this, there's actually a little wheel. I could adjust these with that wheel. Again, great for conceptualization. Hit the green check, keep it at 0.75. The green check. And now don't get too carried away. I have a lot of students who go to the rectangle and they draw another rectangle in here. No, 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 no. You can only extrude one depth <coughs> excuse me, at a time. Go to Features, Extrude Boss, put in 1.5, hit the green check. Now select this face, start a sketch. Notice the circles created the voids automatically. I knew they were through. So that's a little trick you can do. It's not always a good idea to do that, but uh, you can do it in this case. All right, so select this face, start your sketch, or else remember you could go to scenic route, sketch and sketch. Now, we're gonna try doing this in an isometric view. Find center rectangle. Get to the origin. When you get the origin there, you might be thinking, hey, wasn't the origin on the bottom of the part? Are we on the bottom now? No, you're not, trust me. It projects the origin on the surface that you're selecting. So go ahead and click on that center. Drag this to this edge and click. Now go to Smart Dimension and just dimension this top line, get it between the goalposts and make it one and a half. Now you could go to Features and extruded cut. Now you only want to go one inch deep, so type in one and hit enter. Hit the green check. All right, so there is your part, and this is all I expect you to do. Those of you who are taking my classes, this is all I expect you to do, but be aware there's nothing more valuable than a portfolio, a good portfolio when you're looking to get a job doing this. So you might want to, what I call, a detail or dress up these parts. Uh, it's great to make a drawing, but we haven't learned how to make drawings yet. So I just want to show you how to dress it up a little bit. Go to the fillet tool, and this is optional. You don't have to do this. I only grade on what we just completed there. So if you want to dress them up though, this is fine. Okay, I'm going to set this to point, uh, point 0.5 for the radius. I'm going to select these four edges. One, two, three, you could even select through the model. Look at that. Four. And I'm actually going to select this edge just for creativity's sake and this edge here. Hit the green check. All right. Now, and we're just having fun here, by the way. You don't have to do this. Uh, go to the chamfer tool. Hit the little arrow underneath. Fill it. Go to chamfer. And we'll leave it at 0.125 again. You could select this edge and this edge. Um, and... You could also put in countersinks this way on these edges. And if you want, you could carry this through this way too. Hit the green check. All right, so we've made a much more complex looking part 
relatively easily. So that's why I suggest doing this. Okay, now rotate it around the back side. Let's make it even more complex. Go to Shell, keep it at point 0.1, and select this back face. And notice, here's another thing. Look at to, to the right of my pointer. I have a mouse button, and the green check is on the right mouse button. So here's an option. If you right-click, you can apply that. And now we have a pretty simple, but yet looks better than what we had a minute ago part. And don't forget, you could also do this. You could click on this fillet, go to the beach ball, hit the little arrow. Let's change the fillets just for kicks. I'm going to change them to uh, with purple again. Okay. Um, you could also select additional faces for that. Hit the green check. And if we go up here to Material, right-click on it, and let's make this ABS PC. Now it's clear. Now this is going to be interesting. Let's go to, if you have the Render Tools, click on Render Tools and Integrate a Preview. And just sit and wait. The faster your computer is, the quicker you're going to get a photorealistic rendering out of this. If your computer is a very old like mine is only a four core, eight thread laptop. It's not going to go incredibly fast here, but the new like 32 thread or 32 core CPUs, oh my gosh, you'd, you'd be done already. So uh, be aware, the faster the processor, this is where it really takes advantage of this. And I don't think it actually went into perspective mode. So last time it prompted us, so I'm going to turn on perspective mode. And this is the way you do it. You can just click on the little television set there, click on perspective, and that gives us the vanishing point. And here you can see, again, it looks better with the vanishing point, more realistic. <clears throat> and this concludes exercise one.